in a previous video we have understand different cells that are being used in a production of caustic soda or we can say NaOH we have seen the diaphragm cell mercury cell and membrane cell on the anodic side we were producing chlorine gas and on the cathodic side we were producing aqueous solution of NaOH of various concentration if you have missed that video you can find it in the i button over here now having said that let's just move to the today's topic in today's session we are going to discuss all new product in the caustic industries and that is sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate as both these chemicals are being very important in the chemical industries they are being largely used in the detergent and soap industries as you can see here that soda ash or the sodium bicarbonate is the basic compound in the detergent industries so soda ash is one alternative name for the sodium carbonate so you can see here the hydrate of soda ash is known as the washing soda that is your Na2CO3 into 10H2 so these are the different synonyms that can be asked in a MCQ exam such as what is the alternative name of the washing soda then you have to write that it is the hydrate form of the sodium bicarbonate even this soda ash is also known as the sodium bicarbonate as the sodium carbonate so there are basically two different methods by which we can actually produce this sodium carbonate the first one is known as the Solvay method here you can see that and the another one is basically modified Solvay method and that is being known as the dual process. So let's just see what is the different difference between these two process. As you can see here that the Solvay process in which it dissolves ammonia. So you can see here this ammonia is being dissolved in an NaCl solution and reacted with CO2 to produce precipitate of sodium bicarbonate that is your NaHCO3. So which can be calcinized to produce high purity of the sodium bicarbonate I mean sodium carbonate that is your Na2CO3 so in this particular method Solvay method we use ammonia and we dissolve this ammonia into NaOCl solution and we react it with the CO2 and later we calcinize it in order to produce sodium carbonate but now let's see what we do in the dual process basically this dual process is the modified form of the Solvay process as you can see here that the major modification of dual process over the Solvay process is the recovery of NH4Cl solution. So this is the main modification in the, uh, in the dual process. As you can see here that we are recovering solution of NH4Cl as the co-product from the ammonia recycle stream. So this will, under, this will understand when we uh, discuss deeply both the processes. Right? So, but for the exam point of view, this Solvay process is extremely important from this chapter. You need to very well understand this process flow sheet and its process description in order to write the answer about the Solvay process. So, let's just discuss the different properties of this sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate. As, as you can see here, we are going to discuss the manufacturing process of the sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate by means of the Solvay process. So the Solvay process uses the manufacturing of sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate in which the ammonia is being dissolved in an NaCl solution and later it is being reacted with the carbon dioxide in order to produce precipitate of the sodium bicarbonate. That sodium bicarbonate can be taken out and it can be sale as well. To further produce sodium carbonate, this sodium bicarbonate is being calcinized in a calcinizer. So ultimately we will have Na2CO3 as a sodium bicarbonate. So now let's just discuss the different properties of both the chemicals. As you can see here on the screen that the sodium carbonate has, a, has molecular weight of 106 gram per volts. Then its molecular formula is Na2CO3. Its melting point is around 851 degrees Celsius, while its boiling point is very high, around uh, 16,000, around 1600 degrees Celsius. Then its solubility is very much soluble in a water of 
1.8 gram per 100 gram of the water. So we can say that it is 8.6 percentage of the Na2CO3 is being soluble in a water. Then if we discuss about its density, then its density is around 2.54 gram per centimeter. Now let's just quickly discuss the properties of sodium bicarbonate. Here you can see that this is the sodium bicarbonate properties. Its molecular weight is 84.007 grams per mole. And its molecular formula is NaHCO3. So this particular compound is being known as the sodium bicarbonate. Its boiling point is around 851 degrees Celsius. While its solubility is very much less compared to the sodium carbonate. It is only 6.9 gram per 100 gram of the water. And its density is again low than the sodium carbonate. It is around 2.2 gram per centimeter. So these are the all properties of both the chemicals. This can be asked in a MCQ exam of different or different competitive exams. So after understanding that, let's just discuss what are the raw material and what are the chemical reactions that are going to take place in order to produce this sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate. We are going to see both the product in the same process. So we will have single flow sheet for the both the process. Right? So as you can see here, as a raw material, we are going to require purified brine solution. We need to have a brine solution which, which uh, essentially has to be purified. Then we are going to need coal and a limestone that is a CaCO3. And we will require ammonia as a raw material. So these are the three raw materials that we are going to need to produce a sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate. Here are the quantitative requirements of different raw materials for the production of the 1 ton of the sodium carbonate. As you can see here that we are going to require around 0.09 tons of the coke, that is your coal. Then limestone required is around 1.2 tons. Ammonia loss is around 1.5 kg. And power consumption is around 210 kg, 210 kilowatt per hour. Then uh, low pressure steam that are going to require is around 1.35 tons. And plant capacity is ranging from 200 to 2000 tons per day. So these are the quantitative requirements and the raw material for the production of the sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate. Now let's just quickly understand the chemical reactions that are, that are going to take place in order to produce sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate. We have differentiated these chemical reactions that are taking place in a different stage of the production method. As you can see here that the overall reaction is like this, in which CaCO3 react with NaCl aqueous solution in order to produce sodium carbonate and CaCl. This is the overall reaction, right? So now let's understand this stepwise reaction that are taking place in order to produce Na2CO3 in a process description. Here you can see that the first step comes in order to produce this sodium carbonate is the preparation of ammoniated brine. So initially we have to uh, ammoniate it, our brine solution. Let's see how we do this. Here you can see that we are using ammonia and water in order to produce NH4 plus OH negative ion. This reaction is again very much exothermic. So we are using one absorption tower in which we absorb ammonia inside the water so that we can produce ammoniated brine. So this compound combinedly known as the ammoniated brine that we are going to use in a further process. But some amount of the carbon dioxide present in the ammonia is also reacted with the OH ions. As you can see here that CO2 in a gas reacted with the OH negative ion in order to produce HCO3 negative. So this is the reaction that involved in the preparation of the ammoniated drive. Let me just take a pen here. This particular chemical is being known as the ammoniated drive, right? So basically it is the simple process in which we absorb gas ammonia into the brine. We pass brine from the, from the top of the absorber and the gas is being supplied from the bottom. So ammonia will be absorbed in the brine solution. Now let's discuss the second, second chemical reaction that takes place and that is the preparation of the carbon dioxide. So we have to separately prepare our carbon dioxide from coal and the calcium that we have used in the raw material. So as you can see here on the screen that we are using this limestone and we are supplying heat to it. 
as it will produce CaO as a solid and carbon dioxide will be liberated. Again, this reaction is exo endothermic as we have to supply external heat. So on the uh, so on the heating of the limestone, we will have carbon dioxide, and that carbon dioxide we will utilize in a further processes. But we are also using coke in order to generate this carbon dioxide. As carbon will be reacted with air in order to produce CO2. As you can see here, we are again producing CO2. And this limestone that is being generated in the first reaction is again reacted with the water to have the solution of the solution CaOH twice. This solution, aqueous solution of CaOH twice will be used in a ammonia recovery stage. So these are the uh, different chemicals that we need to produce before we react our reactants. The first one is the preparation of ammoniated brand in which we absorb ammonia inside the brand. And the second step is the preparation of carbon dioxide in which we produce carbon dioxide from the limestone from the lime and we react the limestone with the water in order to have a solution of the CaOH twice and that solution will be used for the ammonia recovery. So now let's understand the next step that are taking place in order to produce carbon monoxide in order to produce sodium bicarbonate and sodium carbonate. The next step is the carbonation of ammoniated brand. So we are going to use the uh, ammoniated brand that we have generated in the first reaction. As you can see here that NaCl, Na plus ion and Cl negative ion and we have NH4 ion. So combinedly all these three reactant is known as the ammoniated brand. Basically brand means NaCl with water and now we have added ammonia in it. So all the ions will be free like this Na plus, Cl minus and NH4. And again we have generated this HCO3 negative ion. So all the ions will be reacted together in a carbonator in order to produce NH4Cl negative ion and the precipitate of sodium bicarbonate will be generated like this. Let me just take a pen here. This all the chemicals combinedly known as the ammoniated brine in which we have added ammonia, right? And when they are will be reacted with this compound that is your HCH3 negative, the carbonation of ammoniated brine will take place and it will produce NH4 ion and Cl negative, right? So this aqueous solution will be generated. But more importantly, we will have the precipitate of sodium bicarbonate, that is your NaHCO3. And later, we will extract this NaHCO3 and calcinate it with the, in order to produce sodium carbonate. So let's understand the next chemical reaction that is taking place in the filtration step. So we have to filter our this our solution that we have generated in the previous reactor. So now the NH4Cl aqueous solution will be separated and we will recover our ammonia. So this chemic this thing is known as the recovery section in which we supply the uh, the aqueous solution of CaOH twice that we have generated with the help of uh, limestone and it will with the help of limestone that is being reacted with the water. So all the chemical will combine here in a filtration step to recover our ammonia. As you can see here, this, this CaOH twice that we have used here is the aqueous solution of the limestone that is being reacted with the water in a previous step. And that will react with this NH4Cl aqueous solution and will produce gas of ammonia. So at this stage we recover our ammonia. And CaCl2 aqueous solution will be generated as a waste. So again this chemical reaction is endothermic and we have to supply external heat to it in order to recover ammonia from the solution. Now moving to the last step of this chemical reaction as the calcination. Again this calcination is very important in which the precipitate of sodium bicarbonate is being calcinized in a calcinator in order to produce sodium carbonate. As you can see here, this 2 mole of the sodium bicarbonate is now calcined in order to produce sodium carbonate as Na2CO3. And again carbon dioxide is being liberated off and water is also being liberated. So these are the byproducts of this chemical reaction. So we, in order to uh, produce the sodium uh, bicarbonate, we have to stop here and we have to write this uh, recovery of the ammonia. But in order to produce sodium carbonate, we have to do our calcination as this calcination will be generated, this Na2CO3. So this was the all chemical reaction that are being associated with the solvay process. 
this solve process is again very important if the question is like this uh, explain the solve process for the production of the sodium bicarbonate then you have to write the chemical reaction up till this filtration step because we have generated sodium bicarbonate precipitate in this particular chemical reaction right that is your d reaction that is your carbonation of ammoniated band will generate sodium bicarbonate and later we have to do filtration in order to recover ammonia but the question is like to explain the uh, manufacturing process to produce sodium carbonate then you have to explain the chemical reaction up till this calcination step in which we calcinate our sodium uh, bicarbonate to produce sodium carbonate like this so depending on the question we have to write the chemical reaction because this solve process is being used for the production of the both chemicals so this is what all the chemical reaction that are being associated for the production of the sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate till then keep watching keep learning thank you Thank <music> you.